Charles Hoskinson is a man of many interests. Before diving into blockchain and founding Cardano, he was a PhD student. After that, he worked closely with Vitalik Buterin and a few others to build Ethereum. But that's just a half of the story. Let's talk a little bit in detail about how Charles Hoskinson went from being a PhD student to being one of the most important founders of Web3. Now, Hoskinson is a graduate of the Metropolitan State University of Denver and the University of Colorado. He studied analytic number theory at this institution, so he already had a rudimentary technical understanding of cryptography. However, it wasn't until Hoskinson began his PhD studies that he started investigating crypto. That was when he decided to drop out and pursue a cryptography career instead. At this point, Bitcoin was still a fledging technology and the Bitcoin community was very small. This meant that connections weren't difficult to get and people who were sufficiently motivated could get right in the middle of things fairly quickly. And that's precisely what happened to Charles Hoskinson. As Hoskinson was making his way through the crypto community and learning all he could, Vitaly Buterin was building Ethereum, the new crypto frontier. Hoskinson was also doing his bit at the time to aid crypto's adoption. He'd founded the Bitcoin Education Project, an initiative to make Bitcoin mainstream. By the time Vitalik was assembling a team to write Ethereum, Hoskinson had found himself in that exact circle. He'd gone from being a crypto evangelist to part of the core team building the next thing in the ecosystem. As the founders of Ethereum worked feverishly, they also had to tackle administrative questions. The most crucial question was whether Ethereum would be for profit or not. This question tore apart the group of founders. We talk much more in detail about the story in the video about Vitalik Buterin and Ethereum's history, you can find the link to the video in the description below. Now, Buterin was convinced that Ethereum should run as non-profit and his faction eventually won the debate. Hoskinson was in a second camp and he and a few others believed that making Ethereum a non-profit would hinder its growth. At the time, Hoskinson had been named Ethereum CEO, but the argument on the future of Ethereum complicated that agreement. So, Hoskinson left the team soon after that and built his own company. After leaving Ethereum, Hoskinson took a six-month sabbatical. During this time, he contemplated returning to academia and perhaps rounding up his PhD. However, life had other plans for him. During his sabbatical, he was approached by Jeremy Wood, a former colleague at Ethereum. The two men founded Input Output Hong Kong. The company was founded as an engineering and research company that built cryptocurrencies and blockchains. They initially put a few thousand dollars into the company and started getting crypto building contracts. The company got paid in Bitcoin and the market soon entered a bull run. Within a short while, Hoskinson realized that his company was raking in unbelievable profits and could now build its own blockchain and still have enough left for administrative costs. So the company sold part of its Bitcoin holdings and began work on building Cardano. Interestingly, while building Cardano, Hoskinson refused to seek venture capital. He later revealed that he believed seeking venture capital for Cardano would counter crypto's principles. He felt that venture capitalists would get their pound of flesh from the project before anyone else and so ran contrary crypto's principles of decentralization. In the meanwhile, Cardano grew at a dizzying rate. By 2017, Input Output Hong Kong, the parent company of Cardano, was rich enough to sponsor research labs at University of Edinburgh and the Tokyo Institute of Technology. This research eventually led to the Ouroboros blockchain consensus protocol. This protocol would later be used as the basis of the Cardano blockchain platform. The next year, Cardano announced a partnership with the Ethiopian government to discuss ways to deploy Cardano in the country. Like every other cryptocurrency Cardano suffered during the 2018 bear market, the project only started recovering in 2021, and since then it has managed to hit new heights before succumbing to the current bear market. Now, in the early 2022, journalist Laura Shin released a book titled The Cryptopian. It chronicled the early years of Bitcoin and the individuals that shaped it. Shin's book was heavily researched and she was quite critical of several characters. One such character was Charles Hoskinson. Shin claimed that Hoskinson and others like him had a very little integrity and weren't as honest as the public persona may suggest. Hoskinson was quick to clap back, calling Shin's book a great work of fiction. Shin didn't take this insult lying down and retorted that she truthfully fact-checked everything in her book. One of the claims in Shin's book was that there was no evidence that Hoskinson was ever a PhD student and was only ever enrolled as an undergraduate. But that was just the beginning. Shin claimed that Hoskinson often advertised himself as a CIA agent and once hinted that he'd worked at a Defense Advanced Projects Agency. These are claims that Hoskinson has also made to the public. In her book, Shin argues that Hoskinson's claims are false. 
If Laura Shin's accusations are actually right, one can only wonder what else Charles Hoskinson might be hiding. But let's see what's on the flip side. In Laura Shin's book, she claims that Hoskinson didn't do a lot of technical work in the building of Ethereum, hence his technical capacity might have been overstated. Charles Hoskinson is an important figure in crypto and it's important to understand his background and how he built up his profile. This will also help you better understand how much weight you can put in his words and his actions. Thanks for watching this until the very end and I will see you in the next video.